Okay, so this is the 2021-2236-2 Section A, question 1, open-ended question Okay, section A, question 1, open-ended question Right, so this particular question here The question is the risk of living close to a stratovolcano Are much greater than the risk of living close to a shield volcano so what we're looking at would be analysis of two factors first one on what the risks are in terms of living near a stratovolcano then the second paragraph will have to deal with the risk living near shield volcanoes now you have to understand both have risks so how do you approach this then right uh i would expect that the a good answer to approach it in terms of uh, firstly what is uh what are the types of explosions that you will you will probably probably be experiencing if you're near a stratovolcano? Okay, then the second one will be then the type that you see in a shield volcano. So you need to tell me why why those ex why the type of eruption is different, why is the impact different, what happens to lead to this uh occurrence where it's actually different as well. So you work on the reasons behind why the eruptions are like this work on as a result of these reasons what is the eruption like and then moving on what is the impact of these eruptions before you come and assess and then come to a point whether you agree or disagree that one is actually worse than the other okay so this particular candidate here if we take a close look at it actually the first part uh, her first paragraph here is um she deals with shadow volcanoes she talks about large amount of uh, gases okay sulfur dioxide and ash that is e that is e ejected she also talks about uh, high silica content. Okay, so th I think that's a good idea to introduce the, the idea of silica content to probably differentiate the two and then to talk about how this silica content will lead to certain type of conditions that will lead to the explosiveness that is experienced at the stratovolcano. So what is important here is she does talk about silica content. She talks about then traps more gases however she leaves it at that so i will need to see why do you mean uh, why would higher silica content actually lead to trapping off uh, more gases okay why would there be uh, increased pressure as well is, is it because is it because it, it's a uh, higher silica content less viscous higher silica content more viscous okay as a result what's the impact on the flow what's the impact on it drying up and solidifying and then what happens if you have a solid plug a volcanic plug lava plug on the vent or the crater itself right so you have all these are things that are missing these things should come in into your paragraph itself bear in mind huh, when the question is like this the question only expects you to have two factor paragraphs so effective paragraphs need to be of substantial content and length okay it must be there. Man. So if you're writing a perfected paragraph that is not substantial enough in length, your descriptors are either insufficient or you have not covered enough for the things. Okay, bear in mind, two-factor paragraph is not the chance for you to write less and get more marks. It is not. Okay? It is not. So keep this in mind. Right? So if you move on, you can see that the candidate here has a has a good example, uh, high, highlighting Mount Pinatubo, Philippines, right? What happens? What is ejected? And she does talk about a little bit on the type of eruption itself. Okay, so some explanation points here are missing. Some uh, I will expect a little bit more details with regards to silica content, viscosity, and and then what are the conditions that it creates so that you can have this kind of a more serious type of uh, eruption. Then the second paragraph, she goes on to talk about okay, she goes to talk about uh, stratovolcano. Another risk is pyroclastic flow. Okay, very good. Pyroclastic flow is and uh, a typical form of. Uh, impact that is felt at stratovolcanoes only right then she has a point that is a little bit contentious here she talks about high silica content can move rapidly now bear in mind uh, when you have high silica content you have then lava that is viscous it does not move rapidly okay if it moves rapidly you wouldn't have it uh solidifying and forming the volcanic plug right so this is wrong right this is wrong so this part here is uh, wrong data inserted into the paragraph here. Okay, and then later on, the rest of it about pyroclastic flow is actually correct. Okay, however, what is missing here is uh, not the descriptor of uh, the speed of the flow and what it is, but the idea that uh, actually the thing that flows very quickly is the pyroclast. It is not the, uh, the lava itself. Okay, so bear in mind, uh, when you're looking at or uh, provide that providing a good, clear description, what you're describing must be very clear okay so if you get the terms confused what you end up with is the paragraph will not 
will definitely not get the full assortment of range of marks uh, that it should get for the area here okay next then the final paragraph here uh she moves on to talk a bit about shield volcanoes right correctly listing basaltic uh, magma okay um but but what i would rather use use is you stick to the same term for comparison okay so earlier on you talked about uh silica content then in this case even if it's the shield volcano type i would rather you deal with the type of silica content okay either it's high silica content or low silica content then you move on onto the viscosity and then the consequential effect of the silica content on viscosity and on the type of eruption you have Okay, so non-explosive, I think the general description, she has a rough, uh, a pretty good idea of what the Shiu volcano eruption is going to be like. And she does talk about large amount of lava uh, moving around and then spreading to a large region, but the impact is not clear. Okay, I, I know this is incomplete. She hopefully will have continued on and talked about the impact. Uh, like what happens when when you have the, sl the slow moving or the fast moving lava non-explosive creep continually outwards <coughs> what would the impact be in terms of your infrastructure in terms of your possessions in terms of your uh lives okay so are lives that have threat here or is it more in terms of economic impact in terms of losses due to the inability to move your infrastructure out of the way okay so that that third paragraph i should see then and then finally in conclusion what I hope to see, uh, and some of you have actually, uh, actually uh, put it in, in your versions of the answer here, is that there is a, uh, while there is both, in both eruption cases, there's no way to stop the eruption, right? Which one actually causes uh, uh, faster, faster damage? Okay, which one gives you less of a lead time? That is actually okay, using time as a common criteria, right? Bear in mind your shield volcano, although, although it flows fast, Right, the lava flows fast because the lava is less viscous. However, it is not uh, without warning. And unlike pyroclast, compared to pyroclast, it is nothing at the speed of pyroclast. So pyroclast is the one that kills you. Your lahars flow much faster than your, your shield volcano lava. But there is no way to stop either. And so, if you're talking about the type of uh comparison right if you talk about time reaction time that, then one will give you a lot more reaction time than the other okay so it's, uh, if you had to pick a choice uh living near a shoe volcano would probably be the better choice than living near uh, uh, uh active okay strato volcano right so this is uh question one question one right hopefully this helps you and keep an eye out for the other three uh, oeq explainers